My name is Justin Nesley and I'm a new tenant at 42 Bedford Road. And my name is Yvette Gen. I'm from Cloisters and I have been at Cloisters for 14 years and I was called to the bar in 1991, so I'm a little bit more senior. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously the, the object of this exercise is for you to understand a bit more about personal injury law, the personal injury bar and what our experience is and I think you've got a really good opportunity here because you've got two people from both ends of practice um, from that sort of new fresh entry and a rather more long-standing entry um, and what we thought we'd do is we would sort of take it in turns to go through some sort of headlines for you of the sorts of things that we've experienced um, and then there's an opportunity for you to ask questions and then we might ask questions of each other because we've got very different experience we thought that might be quite interesting for you as well and even though you've got to clear the room quickly at the end, um, you're very welcome to speak to us both if you want to ask us questions afterwards in the hall. Um, so, how did I become a personal injury lawyer? Well, um, really in many ways by falling into it. Um, but why did I choose the bar? Well, the answer I always give to everyone is because I like showing off. Um, but the truth is because what I did at school, like lots of people, was lots and lots of debating. And I really liked arguing and I liked that experience of winning when you win an argument. And then I was very interested in politics in many ways and became very interested in industrial relations and thought what I would really like to do is to get involved in employment law, which I also do, but it was through that interest that actually um, I became a personal injury lawyer because it was through um, experience with industrial accidents when I was a pupil. My pupil master um, was both an employment lawyer and a personal injury lawyer and lots of his uh, most straightforward pleadings were the personal injury pleadings through accidents at work. And so that was how I discovered the very fascinating aspects of injury and quantification. And it really did grow from there. Um, and the ability to kind of mix, and as you'll hear from Justin, um, when you're starting out, uh, you're often faced with lots of different kinds of areas of practice and even though you think you're aiming at one particular avenue often other things present themselves um, you get the opportunity and if you can prove yourself um, you can often build very good relationships with solicitors um, and that was what I did by being involved in accidents at work uh, through that sort of dual approach and doing those pleadings um, as a pupil um, so I appreciated what the uh, area really had to offer and I think that um, my interest in people um, was really what kind of propelled me into that, my interest in being able to really fight hard for people. And of course people who are injured, um, through no fault of their own usually, or perhaps only slightly through their own fault, um, really do need someone to fight very hard. You can't change the injury, but what you can do is to fight for every single penny to make sure that they're compensated sufficiently, that they can actually live um, a reasonable quality of life and that was what really really got under my skin that ability to fight really hard for people who need your help and need your expertise to be able to really uh, often turn an argument to look forensically at how an accident happened what it was uh, that occurred and and causation issues um, really very gripping so that was kind of the the early outset how was it for you um, well I'm, I'm still at the outset and um, I think that the, um, it's fair to say that when I first began doing PI work, um, well that, that was really during my second six, which was actually a very um, uh, sort of close time for me. I, in many respects I sort of still feel like I'm in a sort of second six mindset mm. um, because everything's so new and fresh to me. Um, but when I came to the area, I think it's fair to say that it wasn't an area that I had a particularly great desire to do. Uh, my impression of it was that it was a reasonably tedious area of work um, where claims were just sort of churned through the legal system, um, ostensibly for the benefit of lawyers, really, and, and not much else. And um, my, my background is really more in public law, and um, that, that's where my experience was. And the idea that I might be doing some PI work actually made me feel quite indifferent. How, however, um, once I actually got into it, it was quite a revelation to me because um, actually, ultimately, PI is about, like you say, sort of achieving a remedy for, for people who have suffered some sort of wrong. And um, 
it, it, I mean, it actually makes complete sense that if somebody runs you over in a car, for instance, it's only right that you should get some exp uh, compensation for that. And in that, in that sense, PI really is a sort of powerhouse of justice, but a, a sort of quite a sort of day-to-day -day level. Mm. And, and that the spirit of public law, if you like, is sort of expressed through PI quite neatly. Mm. And um, as you say, it's, it's, it's a, an area that actually deals with um, sort of quite weighty issues that really affect people's lives mm. in, in a way that you wouldn't expect where you just to take your view of PI as being a sort of no win, no fee, um, have you had, a, if there's blame, there's a claim type work. This is quite interesting, actually, mm. because there is, I think there is that real perception that, and some of it's true, at, mm. the, at the very, very junior end, you're doing quite a lot of really mundane mm. whiplash, tripping and slipping, people slipping over in supermarkets, and you think, really? You know, and there's, there's not very much to get overexcited about, and oftentimes there's not very much client contact, uh, which I think can be a bit depressing, um, because it does feel a bit like factory fodder. And I suppose that's where, in, in a way, I was very unusual and, and had a lucky escape, because although everybody at the junior bar does a certain amount of that, mm. because I came in through industrial accidents, um, that was um, quite a different sort of entry level, because they are inevitably more serious than a sort of rear-end shunt, uh, low-velocity car accident, which I think is what an awful lot of the junior bar are, are having to deal with. Um, it's yeah. <laughs> I was just going to add yeah. to that, though, that um, the, the, the rear-end shunt work, which, um, <clears throat> you know, makes up a, a fair portion of my practice, um, <laughs> is a actually, it's, it's funny because people get extremely wound up by being knocked in the back of their car. And the, 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 the temperature of those disputes is, can be extremely high. Mm. And being able to bring some sort of resolution to that dispute can be enormously satisfying even though the, the, the bare facts of the case mm. are, are seemingly reasonably, re reasonably trivial. Um, and um, sometimes the intervention of people like us mm. can just sort it all out efficiently, cleanly, and um, doing justice with a small j mm. um, in, in, the, in, that particular, in those particular cases. Um, yeah. Although it's surprising, I think you, you probably agree with this, even in relatively modest accidents, oftentimes there can be quite complicated issues which really do kind of test your mettle. Um, and in some ways you might say, well, you know, when it's something really catastrophic, uh, that's kind of easy. Um, it's when it's more minor and you're really mm. having to think very hard and forensically. And that actually is quite a challenge. So, you know, you, you find sort of small nuggets in something that doesn't look all that exciting. Um, and when we were chatting this morning, I said, well, you know, how did, how did I kind of get lift off? And like with lots, lots of things and lots of people that you'll meet at the bar, oftentimes it's a piece of luck. Um, I was starting to build my personal injury practice. Um, people in chambers were becoming more aware that I was doing more and more of it. And uh, the, uh, one of the more senior junior uh, who became Silk, in fact, uh, Mr Justice Nicholas Blake, as he now is, not many people know he had a bit of a PI practice to start <laughs> with, uh, had a PI brief that he didn't want to do anymore, particularly now that he was in silk, and gave it to me. And it was a tetraplegic who had been uh, catastrophically injured by diving into a swimming pool without sufficient markers, depth markers. So that was extraordinary. And then I had to find myself a leader, and that was real lift-off, uh, because the, the kinds of issues that were involved there in both dealing with liability, which of course was extremely difficult, um, and then when finally we succeeded on liability to then get into the, the complex quantification issues because of somebody who needed 24-hour uh, care, um, were really, I mean at that point I was probably only about three years, cool, no probably even less, probably about two years cool, and um, it was really a huge challenge, but having done that, um, then mm. you can use that for your experience and you say to people, you know, this is what I've done, this is what I'm capable of doing. Yes, yes. I mean, the, the, one of the things about um, PI work is that it, it does cover all of the bases that you would require in, in any area of practice mm. because it combines um, the ability to, um, or, or the, it requires you to be good at both written and oral advocacy um, and also to be um, pretty hot when it comes to law mm -hmm. both substantive and procedural and um, 
my pupil age supervisor when I was doing my PI um, seat was uh, quite liked to use this reasonably tortured um, analogy to 1970s Dutch football. Um, so apparently 1970s Dutch football was uh, sort of called total football because they were really, really good. Everyone was um, um, in Ajax, I think it was, was um, able to play anywhere on the pitch because they're very adaptable. And to be, he said that to be a good personal injury lawyer, you need to be a total lawyer because you need to be able to do the really kind of fine detail um, procedural stuff very well, but you also need to see the bigger picture extremely well yeah. too. Um, and as well as being good on paper, which is extremely important and increasingly important nowadays, being good on your feet is also um, sort of just, just a basic requirement as well. Yeah. So you, you, need, you, you definitely get your kind of legal five a day mm. when you're a, um, a PI lawyer. And, and I, I find, particular, in particular for me, that that is a great benefit because as well as, as, well as doing PI, I do um, employment work, I do property work, I do public law work, um, and the sort of skills that you learn in your average road traffic accident type case translate very readily mm. to an employment tribunal um, in, into a property dispute. And um, I have found that my PI work has made me feel a lot more comfortable doing other areas of work, which is quite strange, really, because you'd, you'd sort of assume that... I, I assumed that by doing PI, I'd be sort of taking my attention away from other areas of work that I was interested in. But actually, the PI work has sort of mutually self-supported mm. all the other areas of work that mm. I do. And I think you probably find it's quite complementary as well to yeah, those other areas. Yeah, I mean, what's really interesting about personal injury, this is sort of... Not a lot of people know this, but it's true. If you just think about the sorts of disputes that you might have to deal with as a lawyer, well, injury is indiscriminate. Anybody, anywhere, can have an accident. So you don't have to have been um, a tenant of local authority property, which is one particular segment of people. You don't have to be somebody who's engaged with the state or a public mm -hmm. boy. You don't have to be somebody who's in prison or who's had uh, a run-in with the police. It's a fairly indiscriminate um, array of opportunity and the reason I say opportunity because because anybody can have an accident the forensic skills that you develop as a personal injury lawyer often mean you can be pulled into all sorts of things so in more junior practice I had a very vibrant civil actions against the police practice how so you may say and that's because the first time I was drawn into it was because somebody who had been wrongly arrested and banged up in prison had been very seriously injured and the real heart of the claim was to get compensation for the injury. So what they needed was somebody to be able to analyse what had happened, how that person had come by their injury, what the effect of it was and then sort of by a circuitous route to come back to the main kind of statutory provisions about uh, engagement with the police and arrests and so on. So I had to quickly learn all of that but the real expertise that was required was in analysis of the injury and it then resulted in my uh, doing those trials, which was fantastic because they're jury trials. And the skills that you develop, and, and often you, you may find this, uh, perhaps your friends are interested in criminal law or uh, the criminal bar, uh, will often be quite disparaging about civil lawyers. They say, well, they don't know how to cross-examine. But it's not true because you have to develop really key skills to be able to um, get to the heart of what has happened in sort of disputes like that and in many personal injury battles. Lots of it doesn't fight, doesn't go to trial, but when it does, it's because the issues are really, really important and because there is a real difficulty in understanding how this person came by their injury, how that accident came about or that injury came about. And you will be pulled into lots of different areas. So Justin and I were saying that he's interested in public law and has had uh, cases involving the Home Office and so on. And I have been engaged in prison law and actions against the police and various other um, areas in which... It was the injury that invited me in, if you like, and then I was exposed to uh, other areas of law which were fascinating, and I could have uh, developed those. And to some extent, some of them I did in more junior practice and others not. Um, but that then developed skills again um, to the extent that what I have then developed is a practice which is pretty much um, exclusively devoted to what I call catastrophic injury. So it's big brain injury, spinal injuries, injuries of the utmost severity. So the clients that I deal with now um, have long-term enduring, um, you know, li lifelong injury that means that they need huge amounts of care.
care, sophisticated housing, sophisticated equipment. Um, and so the range of issues that you're having to look at um, really uh, test your metal very much. Mm, yes, I think that's right. And um, the thing that, as a public, or as somebody who is in spirit a public lawyer, in practice is a little bit of a public lawyer, um, uh, that I find good about pub uh, PI work is that the areas of law are actually quite interesting in substantive terms. So if you, if you are of a slight academic bent, don't believe anyone who says that PI work is just um, sort of did the person knock into the other person, yes or no. It's much more complicated than that. And, um, for instance, I'm, I'm currently involved in a tripping case. Now, you hear about tripping cases all the time, that they're just basically sort of silly PI claims. But um, the, the one that I'm dealing with at the moment is um, raised the question about whether a small area that encloses a tree on a pavement forms part of a highway. And there's, no, there's very little law on that. And you have to be, think quite creatively about how um, you're going to establish that that is part of the highway. Um, and also, there's another issue about whether the local authority in that case has had a reasonable system of inspections um, of the of the pavements in the area. And that that actually sort of virtually turns into a judicial review, mm. public law type issue. And, and and so one that I feel sort of reasonably comfortable with and um, uh, makes it very interesting when you get to the the actual trial stage because you're having to have an argument less about... Um, sort of small typical PI app matters but more about Wensbury unreasonableness mm. which is something that um, with my public law hat on is something that I quite enjoy doing um, the, the other thing that, that is particularly striking about PI work I've, I find is the procedural aspect to it so it's a heavily um, proceduralised area of law I, I find mm. uh, much more than other areas of law and um, I'm sure you either are or will be very soon aware of the civil procedure rules and, and the contents therein. But um, these have just been quite radically overhauled by um, virtue of some reforms suggested by uh, Lord Justice Jackson. And, and it's fair to say I, I think that these are still bedding in quite a lot and it's, it's only going to be in the future that we'll be really able to see whether these changes have had an, ac uh, an impact on access to justice. But, th but the point is that those changes are indicative of this area of law, which is that it's changing all the time. And so you have to really kind of do quite a lot of work mm. just to keep standing still um, in terms of the, uh, the law that you have to um, apply. And um, a huge issue for us, it, it may not be for um, Yvette, but I've, it probably is actually, is um, there's, there's a case uh, that recently was um, handed down by the Court of Appeal called Mitchell which um, is causing lawyers all over the country all sorts of problems. And um, as lawyers, this is fantastic because it's sort of created all these opportunities to argue some really interesting mm -hmm. points. Um, and I'd, I'd actually, rarely a week goes by that I don't have a case with a Mitchell point in it. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, my advice is that if you're, if you're going to be applying to sets that do PI, work, any civil mm -hmm. law really, you need to read that case um, and you need to know what sort of effect it's having on our work, mm -hmm. which currently has been quite radical um sorry i think no i think that's it's, it's absolutely right i mean if if anybody uh, you know if you really like rules um this is the area for you uh, there's a, a certain amount of sort of geekery in it uh, but actually the winner takes the prize the person who can really know the rules and really knows how to run a claim by using the rules to their best advantage um really does take the prize um i think historically there was there was quite a, a bit of flabbiness you know solicitors would make agreements between each other, counsel would make agreements, well, you know, we're not going to serve this on time, we're not going to quite do get that done by then. And because of the radical change to civil procedure rules through the Jackson reforms, that was one change. And now, because the Court of Appeal has said, you know, everybody behaves themselves and applies the rules exactly as they're intended um, and doesn't make private arrangements which drag litigation out for years and years and leave claimants, you know, wondering what on earth is happening. But the good thing for lawyers is if you like that, this is really a key area to be working in because you can really have quite a lot of fun with it in some ways um, by finding those small points and running with them and uh, the courts are very susceptible to hearing anything which tightens the litigation up. Um, so that's quite interesting and challenging as well. And equally, um, as a result of that, because of those changes and arguably, uh, some people would say, some injustice resulting as a, as a result of that, um, there is more engagement with um, European law because actually since these changes have arisen, 
the savvy personal injury lawyer is now actually thinking much harder about the human rights that than perhaps they had ever had to think before. So that's also interesting as well. There's those sort of aspects to it um, which are really becoming uh, quite interesting. And so whereas, you know, I think a lot of people think, oh, personal injury, really? You know, tripping, slipping, uh, small car accidents. Um, maybe so, but I sit as a deputy district judge and I am astonished how many really quite sophisticated arguments I'm getting on these procedural points in the most mundane, you know, two cars bumped into each other on a roundabout. And suddenly I'm being faced with really very savvy arguments, which is terrific, it makes my job more fun, um, but it means that um, lawyers are using to their best advantage um, the new rules and procedural changes in an area which otherwise, you know, perhaps hadn't uh, really felt uh, that cold wind of change, <laughs> but really has done now. Um, I think uh, people might be interested to know some things about sort of how it impacts on lifestyle. What's, what's your lifestyle like? Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, uh, <laughs> so, so lifestyle. Um, Work-life balance is an interesting issue um, because, um, but I don't. Th I'm not sure if that's entirely just a PI thing. I think that when you're at the junior end, you s you have to say yes to everything, and um, that is a um, interesting challenge. So you and I end up doing all sorts of cases on all sorts of issues all all the time, and um, that's why my practice extends to public property, PI, employment, um, all sorts of areas. I'm sort of, weirdly, seem to be doing a little bit of quite a lot of police law at the moment. I don't, I don't exactly know how that's happened, but um, that'll, uh, who knows? But the, 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 po the point is that when you're extremely junior like myself, you have to say yes to everything, um, and that has an impact in the sense that you there is no sacred you time unless I mean I, I suppose I could probably be a lot stronger and say I'm not going to work on the weekend but I think I wouldn't be able to get the most out of the job if I did that um, I actually find that, that working really really hard and um, sort of giving everything to it is um, quite fun because you you work uh, though the work you do on one case will sort of have a sort of overspill effect on other cases you do and um, like I said earlier, the the experiences of doing lots of different areas of work is that they they strangely sort of find they sort of support themselves. You mm. find yourself becoming a better lawyer as a result. Um, but I don't think anyone really applies to the bar thinking that it's going to be nine to five, and it's mu it's much more of a vocation than that. Mm. And um, you know, if you, if if you did want to just sort of work short hours, then it's probably not the job for you yeah. but I've never found anyone who's, who wants wants to do that I think I've in my experience everyone's quite up for doing reasonably long hours but particularly at the in the early stages I mean I do I find that my pupil supervisor because he was reasonably experienced um had got his he's he's sort of got this fantastic practice that he can just manage himself and so mm. he is in a position where he can say no to stuff and um as a consequence um he can sort of manage his workload a lot better whereas I just say yes to everything, and that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it's the, the difference. I mean, in a way, you, you do still say yes to everything, but you're, you're asked different questions, I think, when you're more senior. Um, but the benefit of saying yes to everything is you do often end up with this sort of um, course that you weren't necessarily expecting, which I think is, you know, is often quite exciting. Um, I think lifestyle at the bar is, um, is hard. Um, Lots of people will say, well, you know, it's fantastic because, of course, you know, when your case settles, you can just, you know, you're free, you do what you like. Um, and that's true up to a point, but if you're any good at what you're doing, you'll have numbers of cases stacked up waiting for your attention. Um, so there's always something to be doing mm. somewhere on something. And one of the slight disadvantages, well, not slight, it can be quite a significant disadvantage of personal injury, is late settlement because everyone's trying to settle a claim as best they can. Um, desperately trying not to send you instructions so they don't incur a brief fee and um, that can put a huge amount of pressure on so that oftentimes 
um, you're you know, desperately trying to get the brief so that you can start preparing and working on the case. Solicitors are saying, well, we're talking, we're talking, we're talking. And then it's four o'clock on Friday before the case starts on the Monday. They said, it's, no, it's not going to happen. We'll bike the papers to you. You know, they'll arrive by, you know, Red Star, whatever, on Saturday morning. It's like, oh, my God. And that mm. happens, and that happens quite frequently. So planning and arranging your life uh, can actually be really quite difficult. Um, and you will find that you will... Uh, have friends who will understand this and other friends who won't understand and will simply not get it uh, but that is what life's like at the bar and I don't think it's particularly peculiar to personal injury although wherever there's um, any trial work in any area um, that desperately holding on to it until the last second in the hope that the council won't have mm. to be briefed I think is, is a universal problem so it is hard to get work-life balance that is difficult um, but knowing that and generating some form of discipline is actually really important and being able to focus very hard when you've got to um, and then you know moving on to the next thing is is part of the business but mm. it's what, what most people thrive on if they're honest um, it's incredibly stressful and very pressurizing and you know when you're sitting writing submissions at three o'clock in the morning you think well, why am i doing this um, but then when you win when you get the outcome that you hope for you come to a settlement conference and you've got a fantastic result you really feel you know mm. you're the cat's pajamas you have really done a good job and people are really pleased and they're incredibly grateful and nobody really wants to see a barrister uh, truth be told you're the last end of the line all, all bets are off by that point um, but actually when you can turn things around or be able to oftentimes just manage people's expectations I think is quite a lot of what we do it's uh, it's very rewarding Yes, I, I think um, one thing that uh, struck me, uh, being being a, a sort of a, a recent former uh, student, is that actually bar life is quite like being a student actually, because but ex except it's a life where you you constantly have exams, yes. so you're always having to yes. um, do es essays, i.e., sort of written submissions. You're always having to get ready for the next day where you're going to have your test, mm -hmm. and um, that's quite. Um, it is. It is quite. You, you do. You do need to sort of get a kick from exams. So if you're one of those strange people who does enjoy doing exams, then life at the bar will be absolutely perfect for you. Um, whereas if you don't enjoy that, then um, I'm sure you will over time. You'll, you'll just sort of come to enjoy it in the end. Um, and uh, I, I, I quite enjoy the adrenaline mm. of um, those days where um, uh, being instructed late on the case, you're just you just thrown into a matter and you just have to sort it out as soon as you can mm. and that that's quite a fun challenge actually because um the solicitor knows they they've instructed you at sort of five thirty the day before a case that sometimes I think they sort of expect that they're sort of almost do it as a test <laughs> just to see what you can do um and and what what often happens to me and in fact happened in the last week was that the the papers for a case on Friday were sent through. On the Monday, but I was told, you know, in no uncertain terms, do not do any work on those papers. I mean, they're going to be sitting on your desk, eyeing you up for a week, but don't even think about reading them. We'll tell you if you need to read them on Thursday, and so Thursday morning comes round, no news. Get the clerks to phone through. You no, know, they're trying to sort it out. Um, no news at about um, sort of three. No news at about five. Five thirty, mm. get a phone call. Right, it's on. <laughs> and then so you have to prepare it like you know thoroughly. Um, all, all night mm. and then you turn up to court and, um, and then you settle it with the door of court so there's, there's no need to sort of have done those extremely detailed cross-examination notes mm. and um, submissions and trying to run another Mitchell point and yeah. this sort of thing because it all gets settled in the end but that's quite fun actually because it's just a bit of a white knuckle right and um, there's, uh, there aren't many other jobs where that sort of thing happens mm. Um, I mean, obviously, it's white knuckle. It's a white knuckle ride if you're a doctor, but no one dies when you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, mostly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, I think that, that's a really yeah, good way of describing it. Actually, it is, and I think um, you have to know yourself if you like that. As much as you know, it makes you feel sick, and you think, "Oh God, I just can't stand it." If actually, secretly, you quite like that, um, then you know, it, it's it's a good area to work in. And, and then there's the the flip side, which you know, other sort of exciting and challenging difficult things. I mean, I do, uh, I spend a lot of my time with experts, experts, you know, in, in areas because I know nothing about, and that's the whole point, and trying to get them to explain to me, um, you know, what it is that I'm looking at, and, you know, explaining it in a way that, of course, I'm going to be able to present for 
um, a judge to be able to understand. Uh, but that also engaged me in trying to understand a huge amount about um, medical uh, medical issues that I wouldn't necessarily otherwise have to know, but also to understand it in a way that I can challenge those experts. And that's one of the things I like. You know, I suppose you might think it's a bit arrogant in some ways, but I think that's a lot of what, uh, you know, as people get more senior and you're dealing with experts, is actually testing out the experts and putting them under some pressure as to why they have taken the view they've taken or why a particular course is being undertaken. I work at, um, because a lot of my um, clients are very seriously injured, so there'll be case managers who are managing all the different people, the support workers and clinicians and various other people, and they've got to justify their position. And I spend a lot of time working with them. And that can be quite scary because, of course, I've never been a case manager in my life. I've never been an orthopaedic surgeon. But I'm looking at things in a particular way in order to get the very best out of those experts. And it can be very scary. Um, and often they don't like being pushed around. But that's one of the, one of the joys, actually, of, of what we get to do is to be able to try and move people, to get them to rethink their arguments and to rethink the way they're looking at a case, to rethink how they perceive this particular individual. And so sometimes mm. I say it, it, it almost feels like um, you're doing something quite different to work at the bar because it's it, it's such a lot of different skills but that is it and and that's where the huge joy comes from and then it can be really scary when your expert goes belly up at trial <laughs> um and that happens um and that's part of the white knuckle mm -hmm. ride you know you prepare yeah. prepare prepared um as i say to everyone once the doors of the court open once we go through all bets are off i have no idea what's going to happen uh, because you know things yes. can just go pear-shaped well, yes although solicitors often expect you to know exactly what is going to happen yes and if anything happens that you haven't predicted, then somehow it's magically your, your fault. Absolutely. Um, but that's just, that's just life. Everyone needs someone to blame. <laughs> um, just before we wind up, I think there are just, just three, um, three kind of key points that I wanted to make in if you were applying to chambers that do a bit of PI work um, uh, and or if you wanted to get into PI generally. Um, so number one, I think, is this sort of idea of commercial awareness. It gets thrown around quite a lot. But in, in the PI world... Um, what that really means is having an awareness of how cases are funded. So money is, quite, is, is a very big, mm. uh, big deal in PI claims, and exactly how the cases are funded and get off the ground in the first place um, has been affected quite, a, quite largely by the Jackson reforms that we mentioned earlier. Um, and also uh, um, how the, the insurance industry is often pulling the, the, the strings in lots mm. of cases. And so sometimes you'll be faced with a client who... Um, you know, almost doesn't really want to be there, but the insurance company mm. is sort of making the case happen, and that that's a sort of sort of slightly strange um, aspect that it's taken me uh, sort of a little while to properly work out that actually there's an insurer sitting somewhere in an office who's really made, who's gener who's actually the um, sort of chief operator in uh, lots of cases. Um, the second thing is, 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 I mean, I think we've made this point already, but just just being re aware of the related areas of work that PI feeds into. Um, it slots into lots of different other areas, such as employment law work and that sort of thing. But PI also has a sister area, which is, effect which is clinical negligence work, which is fascinating and complicated and really, really important. Um, and then it has a sort of cousin area, which is inquests, yeah. where um, that's a sort of form of uh, essentially a kind of judicial investigation into certain kinds of deaths. And... Um, particularly those in a cl clinical setting, although not exclusively. And um, my chambers does quite a lot of that work. And th these related areas are ones that you may not necessarily think of immediately when you think of PI. And, and the third point, um, just finally, is that um, if you're presenting yourself to a chambers like ours, which does a lot of work, including PI work, uh, what, what we like to see is just a general enthusiasm for mm. the law and being a barrister, uh, but not necessarily presenting yourself as the finished article. We, we certainly do not expect somebody to come to our chambers and know the difference between um, various bits of the CPR. I mean, having an awareness of the CPR is obviously useful, but um, w we see pupillage as a training um, process, and so we, we're looking for potential. Mm. And um, so knowing absolutely everything about the law is, is not a requirement. What we're, what we're lo really looking for is just general kind of character traits that would mm. sit, sit well at, at the bar and in a chambers like ours. So enthusiasm and friendliness goes a very, very long way. I think those are really good points. I mean, the, the, um, the related areas, particularly clinical negligence and inquests, I mean, you'll find at the junior bar, because often there's no funding for inquests, 
Um, but actually that's a fantastic way to develop your skills um, both forensically and uh, in trial because oftentimes they'll only want you uh, where it's a controversial death so a death either perhaps in a hospital or a police station uh, something like that where there is a public angle to it oftentimes and that's fantastic because you've got a, an inquest jury um, and there's real real hands-on involvement with the family and I think that's one of the things that I enjoy the most about personal injury I think is the real engagement with the individual now that takes a little bit of time because at the junior end where you're doing sort of a lot of these kind of pile of high selling cheap cases you, you won't see the individual perhaps until the day you're, you, you come to the county court and you're doing the, the uh, fast track trial um, and of course as you become more senior so you've got much more involvement but inquest actually is different you do get much more hands-on involvement with the individuals and of course clinical negligence you know fascinating array of different uh, issues for you to deal with so lots of really interesting things to think about that spawn from personal injury um, and I think uh, cloisters uh, we've got a, a very fine reputation for personal injury and clinical negligence and we do look for people who are really committed to looking at um, issues from that that really thoughtful way um, a way that's client centered and we're very very focused on that so demonstrating your enthusiasm you're not going to know everything at the beginning and we all know that but demonstrating your willingness to learn um, what I find these days and I think I, you'll find lots of senior members of the bar they'll say blimey you know the competition is so tough these days I don't think I'd get in um, and it's fearsome, it really is fearsome, and people do have lots and lots of skills and lots of qualities, but bringing your personality, your hard work and commitment, um, and demonstrating that you can actually look at things, I think from that bigger picture, um, is something which uh, we're always very keen to see, um, and being able to demonstrate enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is so important, because it's hard, and you know, sadly, those who are not enthusiastic from the outset uh, will find it harder still. So I think you have to search, your, search yourself and know yourself really well. And when you bring that uh, to the different chambers you'll go to, um, they'll really see your worth.